Have you ever wondered how we bring quality tech videos to your YouTube feed? It's a very lengthy process. Once we get any review in it, we start testing it, we start collecting data, we create camera samples, screenshots, collect all of that information, analyze it, and then whoever is reviewing it starts writing the script. Once it's scripted, it comes to me, I edit it, and then we go to shoot. All of that data is then collected by the post-processing team that then starts working on motion graphics and editing the video itself. Once the video gets edited, the thumbnail is made, the title is ready, it's uploaded to YouTube, and that's when, voila, you get a notification. And you know what? This entire process consumes about 400 to 500 GB of data every single time we want to make a video. And this is not just for one Track & Tech English channel. We also have Track & Tech Hindi, Track & Tech Marathi, Track & Tech Tamil, Track & Auto, and a bunch of other channels that you probably don't even know about. And God forbid, if something happens to this data, it gets corrupted, it gets deleted. In between all of this process, we are screwed. So, to ensure that our data stays safe, it doesn't get corrupted, and everything is secure, we got this, the Synology DS925 Plus NAS. And for the most part, I think that this is a good NAS setup, but there are some major concerns that need to be highlighted, and I'll let you know all about it in this detailed review of a NAS product for the very first time on Track & Tech English channel. We're trying to get some interesting, different kind of products for you guys. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you're watching me for the first time, I'm Ashad. This is Track & Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive, gadget reviews. Now let's start by talking about the design and the form factor. Now if you've seen a Synology NAS before, the DS925 Plus looks very similar to the previous ones. You get a matte black finish, which I kind of like. You get a subtle branding. It's well ventilated and you get a very clean front layout. It's very familiar, it's very functional and it easily sits and you know blends into any desk setup or even a server rack. You also get four hot swappable base up front uh, if you look at it and all of these are lockable and this is a toolless design which means that installing hard drives is super easy but here's a twist in the tail this one right here this is the 5b expansion unit and this connects over a usb type c connection and the twist is that it's something new because the previous ds923 plus actually used an eSATA port for expansion and this time we have type c over and above this you also get two usb 3.2 gen 1 type a ports one at the front one at the back now these ports exist so that you can connect a ups for extra power backup or you can connect a pen drive to transfer data which means that you cannot actually use the two usb type a ports for expansion, therefore limiting its functionality. And it might seem like Synology is giving you the flexibility, but it's not really doing that. And there's definitely a reason for it. To know that, stay tuned till the end, and I'll explain that. But before that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. On the back, the one gigabit ethernet port that existed in the DS923 Plus has been upgraded to 2.5 gigabits. And this upgrade is very good because it's helpful for most users. But yeah, for power users who would have expected a little more, you know, throughput, you won't get it. You won't get like 10 GB on this. By the way, you do not get an HDMI out or a display port with the DS925, which is fine for the price, if you ask me. Overall, I like the design. It is definitely practical, but what I don't particularly like is the limited expandability. It actually feels like Synology is trying to push their ecosystem onto consumers. Now, underneath the NAS, if you look at it, there are two uh, NVMe M.2 slots. Now, you can use these for actual storage pools or cache, and that's definitely a good addition and great flexibility over previous models. But again, only official Synology SSDs are supported. Why? Now, as for the performance, what you get inside is the AMD Ryzen V1500B. Now, this is a four-core, eight-thread uh, CPU clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. There's no integrated GPU, which means that there's no hardware transcoding. And this is going to be a problem for anybody who wants to run a media server, especially if you're somebody who loves using Plex or Jellyfin. I know a lot of users who still do. So it can handle direct play easily, but if you want to transcode any video, then it will definitely eat into your CPU resources. So keep that in mind. Now, here's the reason why this DS925 supports expansion only via USB-C. That's because Synology isn't using the full PCI Express lanes available on the Ryzen chip. That's why you don't get the higher 10 gigabit Ethernet or multiple Type-C ports for expansion because what Synology is trying to do is actually pushing consumers to buy the higher end variant. Also, when it comes to the RAM, Synology moves one step forward and two steps back. So basically, it comes with 4 GB of DDR4 
ECC RAM. ECC means error correction code and which means that it will give you protection against any sort of data corruption. And that is fantastic. It's definitely a good upgrade. But here, once again, 4GB RAM is not going to be enough if you're going to be running Docker modules or virtual machines. Now you can upgrade to 32GB, but you can only use Synology modules. And unfortunately, they're not easy to come by in India. Now we did, of course, you know, run some real world tests and the performance is pretty solid. So basically we used SSDs to transfer files over the gigabit connection and we got fairly good read write speeds. You can expect anywhere between 100 to 125 megabytes per second, which is pretty good for handling backups and even for surveillance cameras. Now we also tested the thermals and this NAS stays anywhere between the 35 to 40 degree range, which is actually pretty manageable. More importantly, the dual 92 millimeter fans actually do their job pretty well. Even if the NAS is under heavy load, it manages to ensure that this runs quiet. In fact, it's one of the quietest NAS we've tested. But also remember that we were using it in an AC room, which is like, you know, temperature controlled at 24 degrees Celsius at all times. But generally, most NAS servers need temperature control rooms. Now let's talk about the most controversial aspect of the TS925. And that is the drive compatibility. Because the DS925 Plus only supports Synology whitelisted drives. For example, the HAT 3300 and HAT 5300 HDDs or Synology's own SSDs. Now, if you try to plug in a Seagate Ironwolf or a WD Barracuda, then you will definitely get warning messages and it will not let you create a storage pool either. Now, this is obviously a big shift in Synology strategy because earlier you could actually install any NAS grade HDD and it would work fine. Now, you must be wondering, Ashad, why does Synology do this? And you know, there's only one reason why we can think of is because Synology wants tighter control over its ecosystem. So if you use Synology branded HDDs, then you will have better, you know, firmware updates, better health monitoring, and of course, performance optimization as well. But the problem is that the disadvantages massively outweigh the advantages. Firstly, there's limited flexibility, especially for upgraders who already have their own drives. And secondly, Synology's very own hard disk drives are pretty expensive. And the idea of a DIY NAS gets thrown out of the window because you're in a closed ecosystem now. And I don't have any clear evidence if Synology's drives are going to be reliable than other drives. So say for example, if your Synology drive fails, then sourcing one could become difficult. The bottom line is the drive lock-in is the biggest downside. If you're okay with it, then it's fine. All this said, there is still one thing that Synology is the king at, and that is the disk station manager or the DSM. It's the best NAS software out there. It has a clean UI, it is easy to navigate, and it is full of features. You get support for things like active backup, Synology drive, photos, and surveillance station, and all of these are great for office and personal setups. Now the package support for Docker and virtual machine manager are also great if you are a power user. Now DSM is definitely beginner friendly, but it can also be great for advanced users because you get support for snapshots, scheduled backups, and hybrid read. Plus the best part about DSM is that you get regular updates. And my only problem with DSM are, again, tied to Synology's own you know, philosophy on things. The drive lock policy is baked into the software, so even if the hardware is compatible, DSM will not allow it. Now you must be wondering, Ashad, you've mentioned a lot of reasons why the DS925 Plus may not be uh, you know, ideal for you, but it is ideal for us here at Track and Tech because it's fast, it's reliable, and more importantly, it's very simple to use, especially because of the DSM software. And why is that important? Because the production team here, if you look at it, is not the most tech savvy. So what they want is something very simplistic and easy to use. And for that, the DS925 Plus works really well. However, I generally feel that we cannot ignore that Synology is trying to have control over the entire stack. It's moved from being an open system to a closed ecosystem now. However, just like Apple's walled garden, if you're okay with Synology's walled garden, this could actually work well for you. So that's it. That's our review of a NAS for the very first time on Tracted Tech English. We enjoyed doing it, honestly, because it's a different product. Uh, this is the most important tech for most people, especially in organizations, and even for, you know, power users, like single users, individual users. So yeah, I mean, if you wanted a review of the 9 to 5 Plus, this is the one for you. What do you guys think of it? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and definitely share it with somebody who might need it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe. <laughs>